Hello there! Welcome to this little series that I'm doing that's going to show you how to make the game that you see on the screen right now. This entire thing is going to be covered in just six parts and there is an alternate version of this first video that's a bit longer and explains more about Game Maker itself and how basic programming works. And that video is 100% beginner friendly. It is specifically for people who've never even looked at Game Maker before. So if you are a complete beginner and you just downloaded Game Maker Studio for the first time, you can start with that video as your part one of this series. These part ones are going to focus on making a player that can walk around and collide with walls. It's actually a really, really simple process and it only requires, I think, less than 20 lines of code. So uh, I guess without stalling any further, let's just uh, get up and go. It's going to be great. First things first, let's go to our room so we can set our viewport and camera properties. So go to the bottom left, down to viewports and cameras, enable the viewports, viewport zero, make sure it's visible if it's not checked already. And I picked some values that I think look kind of nice for this project. Let's go with 288 by 216. And for our actual viewport, we are going to do 864 by 648 which is three times larger than our camera so our viewport will take up you know just a decent size of the screen okay cool that's uh, all we're doing for this room right now we could act well we could actually go ahead and resize this room to match the uh, size of our camera is a good idea so let's go 288 by 216 Okay, let's get out of here, and now we're going to make our player object and our wall object for the player to run into. So, first let's make some sprites for both of them. We're going to right click, create sprite, open up this first frame here, and we're going to resize this image. It's 64 by 64 right now. We can resize that to 16 is a good size, so 16 by 16 pixels. Apply that. And we're going to make our player red. And that's all we're going to do for that for now. Let's change the name of this to Sprite Player. Good, good. Let's make another new sprite. Again, let's make this 16 by 16. Apply that. And we're going, we're going blue for this wall. Exit out of here. We're going to name it right wall pretty good so now we are going to create our player object and our wall object so let's just go ahead and name this obj underscore player and select our player sprite for that i'm going to come back over here create another object you are going to be obj underscore wall with our wall sprite now this is all, we're not gonna need any code in the wall, so we can actually just go ahead and exit out of this. This is, this is done. So let's go back to our player, add ourselves a create event. So let's set up our variables for the speed of the character. So we'll start with our X speed, which will be used to move our player left and right. Y speed will be used to move our player up and down. And then we'll have a variable called move speed, which will determine just how fast the character can move overall. We'll just set that to one. So let's add ourselves a step event here. Now the first thing we're gonna do in our step event is make some variables that will store the values of whether or not our arrow keys are being pressed. And to do that, we'll set the variable right key equals keyboard check VK right virtual key right. So this function is checking for whether or not a button on the keyboard is being pressed and it's checking this value which is the right arrow key. And so now this will return whether or not it's being pressed. Let's also go ahead and repeat that for up, left, and down. Okay, so as you can see I have up key which checks for the up arrow button, left key which checks for the left, and down key which checks for down. Now we can use all this stuff to calculate how our character moves. So let's go down here. I'm gonna make a comment out and say, get x speed and y speed. 
to make a comment, you just do two forward slashes and then this is not a line of code. It's literally just something that you can mark for yourself. So I'm, I'm just noting that this is what I'm about to do under this. The way we're gonna get our X speed is by figuring out the difference between our right key press and our left key press. So let's set that up like this. X speed equals, in parentheses, right key minus left key, and then this value times our move speed variable. So what this is doing is this is just checking what direction we're going in. And it's doing that by saying, if we're pressing the right key, this will return one. And if we're not pressing the left key, this will return zero. So we'll get one minus zero times our speed, which currently is one. So this would return one. Now, if we weren't pressing the right key, it would be zero. And the left key, if we were pressing that, it would return one. So we would have negative one times movement speed which would be negative one, which means our character would move left once we're actually adding this to our X value. So we can do the same thing with our Y speed. And to make sure that's going in the correct direction, since in Game Maker, as you go to the bottom of the screen, the Y value increases. And as you go to the top of the screen, the Y value decreases. We're gonna have to start with down key minus up key. And then that times our move speed. Now to actually make the character move, we just have to add these values. Let's say move the player. We just have to add these values to our built-in X and Y variables. So X plus equals X speed and Y plus equals Y speed, which is how you would add it every single frame. Cool, so now our player would move. Uh, we can go back to our room go to the instance layer which is an instance layer is where you would put objects select our player press alt to put it in the room and we could actually run this and have the character move around all right nice let's uh, get to the collisions with the walls so back in our player step event to calculate collisions basically what we're gonna do is check if there's a wall in the way and if there is we're gonna set our speeds back to zero before we add them to the players, which means our collision code is gonna to need to go in between getting our speeds and then adding them to the player. So let's say here are collisions. So for our X collision, we're gonna say if place meeting X plus X speed Y with object wall, we will set our X speed back to zero. So we're checking in the direction that we're moving by adding our X speed here to this value. And we're checking for it running into a wall, which is what this function does. And if we would be running into a wall, we're gonna set our X speed back to zero. So we don't run into it and like clip into it. Okay, uh, let's do the same thing with the uh, Y speed. And to do that, we would have to do Y plus Y speed. And we have to make sure that we're setting Y speed back to zero. Just make sure you're putting all this stuff in the right place. So that's it for having our player run into stuff. Now we can go back into our room again, go back to the instance layer so we can actually put some walls down. Let's set our walls all around here. You can place them individually like this, or you could place one and you could stretch it. So let's do that. Let's do that a couple times. That's a good level. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so we're moving and we're running into stuff. Everything's all cool. All right, if you're having any issues, just go back and look at the code and make sure you you got everything written down properly. Uh, yeah, so cool, we did it. This is functionally uh, basically the most important part of making a little RPG like this. So now we can move on to character animations. Okay, so first video down. If you have any questions about anything, there's a comment section, you send me a message on Twitter, or I have a Discord, which is for my game. And if you just kind of happen to find this video, then yeah, check out my uh, game, Rosa Starcross. There's a free demo. There's a trailer for that on this channel. But uh, yeah, part two is gonna be focused on actually getting some animations on our character, which is gonna be super cool. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this first one. Good luck and uh, keep on trucking.